Hello, everyone. We have a very special guest with us tonight. Jennifer Garnard, a prolific writer and a keen observer of life. She believes that her purpose on earth is to help those less fortunate than herself, even if it's only just with a sandwich or words of comfort to someone distraught. In her own words, the first 20 years of my life, I grew up with only God to talk to when I was home, accepting this forced solitude due to my father's very strict upbringing, burying myself in reading, communicating with God, listening to music, and doing creative writing brought me a certain amount of inner peace. I'd already filled a few notebooks with song lyrics. The melodies were stored in my brain. Jennifer's is a story of courage and determination, of grit and strength against all odds. Let's listen to the story from the person herself. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you very much, Anita. Happy to be here and honored to have received your invitation. My pleasure. Jennifer, from your books and your brief description about yourself, you come across as being very compassionate, empathetic, and kind. Virtues we don't see in a lot of people today. Thank you. How far have your life experiences shaped your works? It has shaped it, um, I would say, greatly, because ever since I was a child, I was always sort of feeling protective towards even the younger children. Like even when I was in prep school, I would feel protective towards the children in kindergarten. You know, and my father once said to me um, that I think of people more than myself. Here, I must say that I can only speak of my father because my parents weren't married and my mother left Jamaica when I was around four years old and migrated to England with my stepfather. So there, I never saw her again until I was 10 years old. Just for a brief visit, she came to Jamaica and then I never saw her again until after my father was murdered shortly before my 20th birthday. So my father is really the main person in my life, you know, and my school teachers are the nuns when he put me in a Catholic boarded school to live, you know, and then after he was murdered, then sort of being thrust out into the world after having had such a strict upbringing, you know, it's, you know, I experienced a lot of things, which I really would never expected. And the fact that he was murdered, that has also made me a very deep person, you know, and the things I experienced since then. And then in Jamaica, I worked as a secretary and I was also at the prime minister's office in Jamaica. So there I got to see how politics works, you know, and everything dealing with that, you know, and part of my job was to also help those underprivileged who wrote to the prime minister and his wife for help. So that also made me even more wanting to help, you know. But this was also ingrained in me when I was at school, at a Catholic school, because the nuns used to take us to the old people's home, to the um, handicapped homes for us to do social work. So helping people has always been a part of my life. And trying to understand the people and observing what's happening around me you will find that in a lot of my poems dealing with society, because I don't only write romantic, erotic poems. I also do a lot of spiritual poems and a lot of poems dealing with whatever problems we're facing in society. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, like you yourself said, you've had some tragic experiences, you know, while growing up. So have these difficulties made you a better person? Because a lot of people become negative and resentful and vengeful after painful experiences or tragedies, and they take it out on themselves and on society. So how did you overcome the difficult situations that you had to encounter? And what kept you going? By looking at God as my friend. That means I don't only communicate with God in the mornings when I get up to say, thank you, God, for letting me live to see a new day or good night, God. I'm going to bed now. It's a matter of whenever I'm feeling down, just try and communicate with him as if he's someone you're talking to, you know, and that has helped me. And I've also looked for adults who can be like father figures or mother figures, you know, who I can go to for advice. So it's a combination of these. 
but i would say mainly it's god great so your your conversations with god have strengthened you and helped you become the person you are today help me not to become bitter because even after my father died i never wanted to go out and seek revenge right. you know or or to try and find the murderers because up to the police didn't get them because nobody wanted to testify so right. you know some people were caught but since everybody was afraid to testify the police had to let them go but there was no sense of seeking revenge seeking you know having somebody go find whoever it was to go kill them or whatever none of that was in me you know so right right yes it's just my nature i think it's that strength that you derived from your your uh, spirituality and from your from your conversations with god that kept you going <laughs> yes definitely definitely <laughs> thank you now uh, you have a book apart from your poems you have a book as well right yes uh, yes i i put out a book of poems many years ago mm-hmm. and um because i used in 1999 i started going around and taking part in poetry slams in germany mm-hmm. you know these poetry competitions and i was very surprised at the positive response i knew people would like it but i didn't know that so many germans you know would really like it so that even the organizers invited me to join the team to represent um my city at the national poetry slam competition you know so i was traveling over germany and doing a lot of readings and you know everybody would ask do you have a book or whatever you know so then i decided okay since people keep asking me for it you know and showing so much interest then i should put out a book so i first i had put it out and then but i'd only printed a few copies you know just to take to sell at readings and then in 2009 i decided wait let me um as send the manuscript to a books on demand company you know and let them sort of publish it through that company so i sent it to america ex libri and then after that you know i continued taking part in readings and things like that or other literary events you know and then last 2021 last year another company america contacted me they said they liked the book but um exlibri had priced it too high so they would like to reprint it which is why you have this second edition with the blue cover mm-hmm. can you tell us more about the book what does it contain and what 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 is it all about okay it's it's not only about my life because say friends i'm talking to you you can say a word to me or you can say a sentence to me and a word that you say makes a click in my brain that can inspire me to write something Right. or i can see photos for instance there's an erotic poem in the book called the shower which came about because i was working at a company in germany i'm now retired since 3 years and i was working at a company in germany and they usually have photo exhibitions and so one day the pr man said to me okay we're going to have a photo exhibition in our halls of erotic poems and i hear you write romantic poems so would you like to do some poems during this the official opening of the exhibition i said well i wouldn't want to lose my job by doing poems which are a bit too erotic so send me the brochure of the um the woman whose whose photos will be shown they sent it to me and three of her photos sort of made a click in my brain and i immediately sat at my desk and wrote a poem based on the three, three photos and i actually wrote it even in german and had to translate it in english for the book because it came automatically in german so that's how it's so easy for me to sort of just write you know or i can see something happening and then just see observing i write so some of the poems are personal but it's difficult for someone to say which poems are personal and which are not just fiction except for the ones dealing with my father i think there are about three poems in the book about my father yeah. right right uh that sounds really interesting i think everyone should uh, you know get a copy of the book uh, you know and read it because that i'm sure will be very very inspiring yes uh, the first part of the book is deals with spirituality romance and friendship 
The mm-hmm. second part of the book deals with spirituality and death. The third part are erotic poems. And then the last part deals with society and nature. I didn't just crisscross them in the book. I decided to separate them so that people can look according to what they're interested like, in. And, it, and it's like a whole panorama of, you know, what life and living is all about. I mean, these are these these are the things that make up life. So, you know, I mean, I think yes. you've you've kind of encapsulated, uh, you know, life in all its colors, you know, and, and perspectives. So yes. I'm, I'm sure that's going to be a very, very uh, inspirational read. Now, uh, since you're such a keen observer of life and since you, um, you know, since all your works have a strong philosophical undertone, um, let me ask you, um, why do you think that we are going through so many tragedies and dark situations today in particular? I mean, when you compare it with, uh, you know, um, you know, when we were growing up or, or uh, some years before, earlier, why do you think we it, it, life is so tough now? Is it because lives have become darker per se or is it because people have too much that they're not willing to give up or share what's your take on what life is like today um the human race is too selfish Mm -hmm. that is just putting it in a nutshell and you know for instance there are times when i don't even have my phone online Mm -hmm. because i just don't want to be bombarded 24 hours a day people need to find time to sort of go within themselves you know, think more of others and to not just me, 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 me. And the world is like that today. I look at, for instance, the problems my country is having right now. I'm from the Caribbean island of Jamaica. And right. when I go back there on holidays, I am just shocked to see how the prices keep rising. But the minimum wage in Jamaica is like between eight and ten thousand dollars a week. Now, you cannot, the people now are even having difficulty finding a place to rent because Airbnb is now, everybody now wants to rent out whatever rooms they have to Airbnb. So, okay, where are the local low income housing for the people? You know, and sadly, the crime rate is increasing i'm not saying it's because of that but that contributes to because if you cannot find a place to live cannot afford a place to live you're going to sort of see okay where can i find the money so that i can afford something to live i remember when my father bought his house in 1963 he paid six thousand jamaican dollars for it our money has devalued so much now that you cannot find houses under say six million And the six million is just a little hot, Mm. you know? So say you want a proper house or a proper apartment, you have to be thinking in 10 to 20 million Jamaican dollars. But the normal person only earns the 8,000. So accommodation, that's a problem. So therefore, then I would say the politicians, not just in Jamaica, everywhere in the world where there is poverty, in a part of society, because even in America, you have a large section of people there living on the streets, living in ca- tents. You know, the politicians need to sort of do something. And I think they're not doing enough to help the poor. And so the dissatisfaction comes. And then everybody now trying to do their own thing and just thinking of themselves. Absolutely. I, I, it's a sad I, word. And I don't see a solution to the problem unless the politicians step in. Absolutely. I was just going to ask you, that's my next question. I mean, no, no, that's not exactly the next question, but sort of. I mean, um, I mean, what do you think people can do today to overcome the problems and challenges that they face? I mean, this this is not about, you know, someone stepping in or not about the government stepping in, but personally within themselves, what can they do to overcome the problems and challenges that they face? And when they're drowning in sorrow, um, how do they get over it in a positive way and bounce back? Okay, if you're drowning in sorrow, then I suggest you turn to God. And if you don't believe in the God of the Bible, then in whatever spiritual belief you have, then sort of just go within yourself and pray to Allah, pray to Jehovah, pray to God, pray to Buddha, pray to Ganesha or whatever other gods you may have, you know, just and just try to pray for you to not become bitter 
not to get angry, not to go out and kill somebody or to rob somebody because you need something, but, and then try to see, are there anyone around, you know, is there anyone around who can help me? But sadly, most of the time, the people don't have anyone to help them. And so that's when the despair comes in and when they drown in their sorrow, because not everybody can find someone to help them. Absolutely. And that's the sad thing. You know what's and happening in the world today. Absolutely. We just have to look at what's happening in Ukraine now. Absolutely, absolutely. Do you think? Uh, I mean, you. I think you um, hit the nail on the head when you s- used the word despair. I think that's what uh, you know uh, the overwhelming emotion is today. You know, among people, it's despair and a feeling of helplessness and vulnerability, mm-hmm. and you know the sense mm-hmm. of not knowing what to do. Would you agree? I mean, like. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. You People can always say, okay, go out and get a job, but there are not jobs for everybody and not everybody are qualified. And even those who may want to get themselves qualified don't have the opportunity. Absolutely. Because they may be living in a little village somewhere there, there are no schools, no place for them to go to do vocational training, you know, or maybe it's a matter that they can't afford it. So, sadly... We're in a very, very difficult time because cost of living just keeps rising. Absolutely. I I agree. It's a a, a dark world that we live in. It's it's dark and bottomless at this point. And um, Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. you said, I think turning to God is the only option we have to, you know, prevent ourselves from becoming bitter and regret later. Yeah, it doesn't help us with our material needs, but it helps us to find inner peace. And that is something that is extremely important in today's world. You know, and those who have should do a bit more to help those who do not have. But not everybody feels that way. I agree. I agree with you. Um, That makes me, uh, you know, come to your poems. Uh, Can you uh, read us a few lines from some of your poems? Uh, I'm sure that will be very uh, inspiring uh, to uh, all our uh, viewers. Okay. I will do one social from the social section. If you want me to do something else from a romantic or other section, you can let me know. This poem is called Regardless. Mm -hmm. And it's about how I feel about how we should be to each other. Regardless. You are hair. She is hair. He is hair. I, you are black. She is white. He is yellow. She is red. They are brown. I am a mixture of all. You have parents. She is a runaway. He is an orphan. They are from a broken home. I, I was left at the church door. You are a billionaire. She is a school teacher. He is a garbage collector. She is a superstar. He owns a Fortune 500 company. They are homeless. I, I am unemployed. You have a PhD. She is a dropout. He is semi-illiterate. Look at me. You can see I am illiterate. But regardless of who or what we are and have, We are all equally created. We are all selfish. Not one of us is completely happy. Whether or not we care to admit it, we all need each other regardless. That's it. That is an amazing poem and that is so well penned because it just goes to, it just um, encapsulates what we were talking about. I mean, you know, all the selfishness, all the greed, all the all the 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 unwillingness to part with what you have is it all comes to nothing because we got i mean we we need each other at the end of the day you know regardless of who we yes. are so that's a beautifully uh penned uh, poem uh would thank you happen you. to have sorry i i didn't get you no i just said thank you the, i i was just wondering would you have um another poem that you can uh, read out to us maybe from the social section or from the social section? Yes. Or the romantic section? Social, okay. Then I'll do... Okay. Mother... This one is titled Fly High. Right. Mother bird cares for her young. When it's strong enough, 
to enter a world so tough. She gives it advice, then sends it on its way. She sings, bye-bye, bye-bye, little one. Now you're there, mama's work is done. You're now as strong as I am. You can fly high in the sky. So fly high, fly high, little one. Always fly as high as you can. Stay far away from a beast called human. Pause atop the highest tree. There you may remain free. As we say bye-bye, bye-bye, little one, remember to always fly as high as you can. So the next day you can see the beautiful Danan, the sea. Whenever you near to the ground, before you land, always look around. Be careful of the beast called human. The best friend is a thing called a gun. If he points it at you, you will never again see the sun. Always fly high, as high as you can. Stay far away from the beast called man, so you can live to see the next day's golden sun. Whoa, that is again another. Uh, it's a very inspiring poem. It's very motivational. It's all about flying high. I'm so glad you read it out, uh, you know, for our uh, um, viewers. I'm sure we'd all love to, uh, you know, read more of your poems and, you know, um, get inspired and motivated in a life that is dark and bleak and dreary and bottomless. So uh, it, it, it's brilliant. I mean, I'm so glad I got this chance to speak to you. I'm so glad. Um, I am so honored and I am so privileged that you took the time um, to uh, come and speak to me. Uh, we should have uh, more uh, conversations and you know i i i want to i mean i would love to hear more of your poems so um thank you very much it was a pleasure having you on the show thank, thank you. you i thank you anita it was my pleasure conversing with you and being given the chance to read some of my poems for you <laughs> thank, thank you so much thank you very much